wanna go all over the world and start living free. I know that there's somebody who is waiting for me. I'll build a boat steady and true as soon as it's done. I'm gonna sail the loveliest dream of my dear someone. Hey, what's up, friends? How are you? It's Lisa from Life with Fife. I am coming to you with a new project on the needles. So excited. I'll show it to you. I'm just catching some stitches that fell off. Um, it's really in the beginning stages here. I just finished up the, the ribbing. I did a knit three, purl three ribbing using um, a yarn, a really pretty yarn that I picked up at the yarn festival back in the fall. Um, it's a natural, this is, it's an undyed wool and I'm using the yellow and pink that I still have left over from my uh, sweater that I just knit with Wing in a Prayer Farm. I think it's called Vermont Flock, the pink and the yellow. And I know that some of you might be noticing all these floats that I have. I did not, I did not trap my floats. This is an experiment I'm doing um, because I'm trying to avoid the puckering that sometimes happens in my work when I trap the floats. I sometimes trap them, I think, too tightly. So I decided, you know what, I'm really careful with my sweaters. I don't, generally speaking, um, pull things too tightly or catch things. So I'm just going to be careful with this vest. It's going to be a little bit oversized and I'm going to not trap the floats and see if that helps a little bit with the puckering and see if it makes a difference. All right, we're always trying new things really relying on Elizabeth Zimmerman these days and I'm going to be talking about her in this podcast today. I'm going to be talking about this book a little bit and um, this podcast is about knitting, creativity, and spirituality and how the three of those things interconnect and conspire in our lives to make us happier and that by leaning into any of those three things that it kind of enhances the other two. So by leaning into my creativity, I get ideas about my knitting by kind of acknowledging my creativity. I am able to um, free myself up to, uh, to do more exciting things with my knitting and um, be a little more bold, be a little more not afraid to take chances or take risks. And this kind of across the board, it helps my, um, it improves my knitting, right? And then it also, increases my spirituality somehow. I'm not sure how. It makes me feel more whole as a human being when I am doing what I really want, when I'm following my heart. And this makes me feel like I'm living from a place, a whole place. Because I'm happier, I feel more connected to other people. I feel more empathetic and it's sort of just, it enhances my spirituality because my spirituality is also about mindfulness and letting things go. And when I am knitting and what I hope for you as you're watching this podcast, that you are letting go of your thoughts, any negativity, any kind of troubling thoughts that we as human beings tend to cling on to and hold on to, that you just kind of let them flow through you right now. And either if you're knitting something or having some tea or just relaxing, I hope that you're able to use this time to connect more deeply with yourself and what it is that you want in life and what you'd like to create and um, let go of some of that negativity because I find that knitting can be a really good medium for that. So, okay, so I'm working on, I was sitting around thinking, well, what am I gonna knit next? What will be my next project? And I really wanted to do a vest. I want something that is uh, gonna be warm, but not necessarily bulky, great for the fall. I wanted something colorful. And I also wanted it, the contrast between an undyed wool and some colors. And I'm, I just happened to be using hand dyed wool in this instance. And I just really love that contrast. I think it's really pretty together. Here's a picture of the hand dyed wool I'm working with. I didn't want to follow a pattern, just didn't feel like it. I, you know, I was inspired by my daughter who was visiting, who's now in Scotland, visiting, taking a, a trip with some friends. 
Here she is, my daughter Sophie, and her first trip to Europe in Scotland. Look at that gorgeous view from a castle. And the next photo is Edinburgh Castle, which is famous. I was inspired by her because she just picked up and started knitting a sweater. Just kind of took some yarn that she had and she did such a good job with it. I'm gonna show it I'll, I'll, as she, she's not finished with it yet. I'm not gonna show it, but it's just beautiful to see someone who sometimes beginner's mind, you know, you just don't know to worry about anything. You just pick up and you're like, okay, I helped her a little bit. I said, let's figure out what your gauge is and let's figure out how big you want it to be. And then we figured out how what her gauge was and how big she wanted it to be. And then we just multiplied that and came up with a, with a number to go around and she wanted to split him. And so that was easy enough. And then we did, you know, and then next, and then she said, I'm gonna put this in as a big stripe. And so she, it's like really came out amazing, very subtle and it's not finished yet, but it's gonna be a gorgeous sweater. And so I was inspired by her. She inspired me to do something of my own and without a pattern. So, and of course, so does Elizabeth Zimmerman. That's Elizabeth Zimmerman's whole thing was, you know, own your knitting, you are the boss of your knitting. And uh, she created the Elizabeth percentage system, which allowed and empowered everybody to create, when you know your gauge, you can actually set a number of stitches in the round and create a garment that fits you. And that is completely in the round with no seams. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm making a knitted vest based on my gauge and I'm gonna do it complete, completely in the round. I'm not gonna do any parts of it flat. I'm gonna put a steak for the neckline and a steak for the sleeves. And then I'm gonna pick up stitches and just do it that way because I just feel like inspired to do that. Really feeling Elizabeth Zimmerman's spirit in my knitting lately. You know, this whole idea that knitting was not, I, I mean, I, I disagree and I agree and I disagree with her. Um, she did not, she was hesitant to call herself an artist or to think of herself in, as an artist in any way, which I disagree with. I mean, she was clearly an artist and she was extremely creative, but I kind of also get where she's, what she was coming at with that. And it was the sense that ev she didn't want it to be an exclusive activity that required a ton of skill and uh, a ton of talent. You really can be fairly untalented. And I say this speaking for myself only, there are many talented knitters and there are many, many skilled knitters, but it's really, um, it's an art, it's, it's a skill more than an art, I would say. And you can bring your artistic talent into it, but you needn't bring your artistic talent. You can actually just rinse and repeat this idea of your gauge, your number of stitches around based on the width of your, of your body. And you can just keep repeating that and just kind of make simple sweaters and they'll be functional, they'll be beautiful. Um, and it didn't require any talent. So I think that that was her, that was what she wanted to get out. That was her message. At least a good piece of her message was that. Um, and I appreciate that because I think so many of us feel overwhelmed when we look at the beautiful sweaters that we see. And she allows us with her, with this percentage system, she allows us to kind of step into the arena with all these very, very skilled and talented knitters and create garments that are beautiful, deserve to be shown, lovely to wear, soft, functional, warm, useful. They're good enough to give as gifts. All of the things that we wish for when we start knitting, you can almost just immediately start doing that with Elizabeth. So I'm, you know, here I am knitting for so many years and here I, this is the first time I think, maybe not the first time, I think I did it more in the beginning. I was braver in the beginning, um, but it's the, it's the first time in a long time that I am just creating something that is based on my own design using a chart that I have in one of my books because I prefer larger motifs in my color work. I wanted something with a large motif um, since I'm doing the whole body in the color work. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited and I'm thankful for it to Elizabeth for that. I saw her, I was looking today and I saw something that she wrote, uh, comparing knitting to writing a poem. And I think it's an absolutely beautiful comparison. And I think that there's a lot of truth to it. There's meter in a poem, you know, which is rhythm. There's rhyme, which gives you an end point and a beginning point, right? It kind of satisfies the ear and we have, 
we have meter in our knitting, right? We have stitch number. We have our visual color work, which uh, begins, we have motifs that begin and end on based on repetition, right? Much like rhyme. And there's something so satisfying about completing a sweater and having it be finished and wearable and beautiful, just like a poem. It is a moment in time and you can use your knitting to mark the years, right? We, I can pick up any, knit, any knitted object that I've made and remember where I was at that time, what I was doing at that time. It's the most beautiful kind of journal that we can keep. So yeah, I love that. And even though if, if my knitting survives and goes on to be passed down to my children and to whatever grandchildren I may someday have, they won't know the story of that, but the energy of my story will be in their knitting. And that's something so beautiful that they will be carrying that around and that my children hopefully will still remember the stories or what was happening in our lives when that sweater was made. And it's, it's a really beautiful way to create a legacy within your family um, with beautiful objects. Yeah, so that's, that's just my mind today. I'm thinking about Elizabeth Zimmerman and grateful that she has allowed me to have the opportunity to create sweaters before I knew anything. And still, I know nothing compared to so many experienced knitters, but I'm still able to knit and I'm still able to do pretty good knitting. So I hope that she inspires you to pick up some knitting, uh, pick up some yarn, do something a little bolder than you normally would, wear something that you think is beautiful and without worrying about what other people think because I bet you others will also think it's beautiful because it is. So have an amazing rest of the day. Enjoy the sunshine wherever you are or enjoy whatever weather you're having. Remember to like and subscribe and comment below. I so enjoy hearing what you're knitting. Share your knitting with me. I love to see it. And that's it. Namaste. Oh my God, I'm out here in the garden. Look at these tomatoes. We had a ton of rain last week and they've just, they've reached the top of the bamboo. Oh my God. And we cut down a tree. Well, we removed some dead trees that were overhanging and it's so much more sunlight in here. Look at that beautiful red pepper. But the cucumbers are done. I think they're kind of at the end. Our lettuce might be coming to an end and behind there we have some beautiful basil. Still getting zucchinis, but look at the big, the big winner is the zucchini. Zucchini, look at all the zucchini, I mean, not zucchini, eggplant. Look at all those beautiful eggplants. They're just, they just keep going. They just keep going. I'm so thrilled. And look at all my tomatoes. Holy moly. I'm going to, there's not money ripe right now. There's one. But in another few days, I'm going to have so many tomatoes. Yay for gardens.